Is this good? These 40,000 pound underwater bombs are just another test before the US Navy's largest and most expensive aircraft carrier is declared combat ready. The USS Gerald R. Ford is the first in a new class of carriers with more firepower and a smaller crew. The it's previous kind of class began service in 1975. The Ford was designed to save billions over a 50 year lifespan. Still, the Ford was to double save. the cost of the last carrier built, and it's been plagued with unexpected costs and delays. Huh. Just unclogging the toilets can cost $400,000. We went aboard the USS Ford to find out why America's most advanced aircraft carrier still can't be deployed nearly two decades after plans to build it began. Wait, what? These sailors are moving ordnance onto a new kind of weapons elevator that allows them to do what would be impossible on any other aircraft carrier. We're bypassing the mess deck area. We're completely independent. You would never even see us move an ordnance throughout the day. So it's more secure with higher survivability and we can store more on board. It's the only way to move munitions from deep inside the Ford to rearm planes on its flight deck. Less advanced carriers move weapons in a more dangerous way through the hangars to the flight deck. There are 11 elevators on board, yet only seven are fully functioning. Until all 11 elevators are complete, this ship can't be certified for deployment. The advanced weapons elevators are just one example of nearly two dozen major new technologies that make Jesus. the USS Ford cutting edge and one big floating experiment. Hal Manville is a retired Navy captain who served as the very first project manager on this new class of aircraft carrier. The ship was supposed to start construction in 04. It got moved 05. They made an adjustment. They delayed it a second time. They delayed it a third time. Pushing that out, the ship, just by those delays, went from $6.4 billion to $10 billion. The Ford is the first of four new carriers what already in different stages of design and build. The Navy plans to replace the entire supercarrier fleet with Fords. Billion? U.S. law requires its Navy to operate 11 carriers at all times. But with all the delays, the U.S. is down to 10. The reason we have 11 is driven by the fact that the uh, U.S. Navy is kind of a two-ocean Navy, if you will. Of the 22 aircraft carriers in the world, Half are American, while China, Italy, and the UK have just two each. This carrier class, if, if we build 10 or 11 or 12, could go easily into the 22nd century. More than 5,000 shipbuilders worked an estimated 49 million hours to build the Ford. That's seven times the hours logged building the Empire State Building. Admiral Mike Gilday, the Chief of Naval Operations, said it was a mistake to introduce more than maybe one or two technologies on any complex platform at a time. Admiral Gilday is right. What you want to do is only do one or two new technologies on, on a new ship. And here's the reason why. Ships are the only weapon that the, the prototype, the first of the class, Jesus. goes to war on. The ship was christened in 2013. The Navy accepted delivery of the ship in 2017 without everything working as a way to stay under that year's budget requirements. Four years later, the carrier's systems and technology are still being tested, and it won't be ready for deployment until 2022. So it can go to sea, pilots can take off and land, but the problems are still being ironed out before it's ready to go to war. It's pretty clear that you know, putting this many new technologies onto one ship was a mistake from a program management perspective, because uh, it did cause the program to be delayed. The delays and tests and fixes are so costly that every new piece of technology is over budget. Two of the technologies that set the Ford apart from every other carrier are the aircraft takeoff and landing systems. Some of those are very large, you know, not incremental uh, changes, but I would say revolutionary changes in terms of the electromagnetic aircraft launch system. What was? I don't know. Other carriers use steam-driven catapults to propel their jets off the deck. 
but the Ford uses electromagnetic linear induction motors, similar to a high-speed maglev train or roller coaster. Just research and design on the electromagnetic aircraft launch system cost over $1 billion. Installing it on the USS Ford cost more than twice what it was supposed to. The steam catapult system had thousands of moving parts. There are less a than a hundred moving a roller coaster? parts <clears throat> on an electromagnetic catapult. So that was a big improvement. Fewer moving parts means fewer sailors to operate and maintain. The smaller crew and new technologies were projected to save $4 billion over its 50-year run, compared to the previous class of aircraft carriers. The new system causes less stress on the planes, so they last longer. And more types of aircraft can use it, including ones that are still being designed. Landing and takeoff are easier on pilots, too, since a computer does the work. The pilot turns over control to the computer. It autopilots the airplane down to the carrier deck. And then when it hits that uh, advanced arresting gear, it just smoothly brings it to a stop. So it's a dramatically different uh, experience for the pilot. It's much safer. Um, and then it's also going to make the airplane last longer. The Ford's computerized systems allow both lighter and heavier planes this to take off and land, something that limited older carriers. The Ford's combination of new technologies means that a wider variety of aircraft can land on it. You know, it it's smoother arrestments for- You know nothing about healthcare. You're like, I'm from Quebec, man. We got this shit, we got this shit for free, motherfucker. You got any problem, you go to the hospital for free, wait a couple hours and you're in. Aircraft, um, that is our goal here on board for uh, future of naval aviation flying drones and f 30 You might be a little red card. Oddly enough, the new launch system can't handle the newest fighter plane, so the Ford will need a retrofit to handle the F-35 stealth fighter. Y'all motherfuckers got free vaccines. Everybody's out here, well, where's my free healthcare, bitch ass? You got free vaccines and you don't want to even fucking take them fucking flat earther. Jesus Christ, man. The next Ford class carrier is under construction in the shipyard, but it's already being modified for the F-35 at an added cost of $315 million. Many of the Ford's delays can be traced back to politics. Five American presidents over two decades weighed in on the planning and building of the Ford. The Department of Defense made the aircraft carrier program far more expensive than it needed to be. And you can take that to the bank. So far, the true cost of building this war the force is $13.3 billion. Taxes? billion dollars, a number that's increased oh, I mean, nearly the every really? year since construction began. Even the most basic of onboard functions can be eye-wateringly expensive. The ship has 750 toilets connected through vacuum pressure, like the system on commercial jets. When one toilet gets clogged, the whole system can be affected. The fix requires an acid flush that costs $400,000, and the Navy has said it doesn't know how often it will need to be done. The Navy changed what? its shipbuilding programs when the Ford's problems came up. It began designing and testing the takeoff jet chat. Obviously, they thought about this, but how do they have electromagnetic uh, f flight uh, jet propulsors that cost $1 billion? And if somebody goes downstairs and takes a shit on the first thing, everybody gets clogged and it costs a fucking a million to fix it. The effect. What even is the that? This requires an acid flush that costs $400,000, and the Navy has said it doesn't know how often it will need to be done. The Navy changed its shipbuilding programs when the Ford's problems came up. It began designing and testing the takeoff systems on land in 2011, while the Ford was under construction. The advanced weapons elevators are also now being tested before installation. However, that program will only benefit the next Ford-class carrier. Built as a deterrent, the true value of the Ford is likely to be in the wars it helps prevent, rather than those it wages. Oh, okay. Um. Interesting. What is this? This guitar might look like a real Gibson, but it's not. This is coming from China. And wait, it's and it's Gibson, S O N, not S U N. These are <sighs> fake too. Coach bag with a Michael Kors zipper. Ooh. We have Nike sneakers here. They're a part of a huge counterfeit industry worth over a trillion dollars. And since these fakes come through the mail, 
Customs and Border Protection officers are Hashtag tasked with seizing them. Glitching. In 2020 alone, CBP seized over 26,000 counterfeit goods shipments. The knockoffs are getting better and better and more profitable for these counterfeiters. Not only are these fake products dangerous for con Guys, I hate to say it, I'm, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not even going to open this debate. I'm just going to keep on the video. They've had cadmium, arsenic, lead, and cyanide inside makeup, and it's disfigured people. Perfume has had horse urine in it. Profits of counterfeits are known to fund criminal activity. Guys, guys, they think... They think including attacks and... Jesus! Guys, companies take, take decent slash shitty materials, right? Right? Make people in sweatshops fucking work work for the dumbass, then then overprice their dog shit, and they get mad when somebody does the exact same thing for a fraction of the price. Yeah, I get it, copyright and whatnot. I understand how how business works, but Jesus, man, I mean, I mean, dude, I mean, dude. Counterfeit uh, goods is getting easier, but stopping them what? is much harder. It's like whack what, what do you want they come me? up, you go after them, they come down, they go up again. And here we have a counterfeit watch. That's customs officer Steve Nethersall. If it's overpriced, unethical, dog shit, and a legitimate scam, why do you get mad when you get over scammed by somebody doing it better? Just. He's America's first line of defense against counterfeits. I don't know. I've had many million dollar watch seizures. What? We visited him at JFK. A lot of the prices. How he's a lot of the, and stopping a lot of the prices are unethical, legitimately. Thanks. You, you would feel bad if they weren't unethical and they would still make good profits. Is it that hard? All while the counterfeit market is surging. Counterfeit goods are anything that infringes on a company's intellectual property rights, or IPR. Think fake Air Jordans, Rolexes, or Louis Vuitton purses. And because these products are trademarked, counterfeiting them is illegal. You can just be guaranteed that your product is gonna get counterfeit. It's just a matter of time. Half of the counterfeit goods CBP seized in 2019 came through the mail from China, followed by Hong Kong and Singapore. So the consumer, the, so the consumers get hurt more. No, absolutely not though. How, how do the consumers get hurt by this though? They willingly buy counterfeit bullshit. Before a package ever lands in the US, CBP gathers intelligence on the sender, container, and aircraft. Using this intel and x-ray machines, CBP narrows down a million packages into the ones that'll get pulled for further inspection. What? Those suspicious packages will go straight to Steve. He'll start by looking at the box. Well, I'm looking because I don't have my glasses on, so I'm cheating. The first, when it comes in, is the country of origin. Louis Vuitton, they're coming from France. The watch is coming Oh, so these guys, they know all the brands and shit. They're China. like, Bing, that's your number one analyzers. Brand. Then you look at the dilapidated boxes. Then he'll open up the package. And this is from a familiar sender that sends counterfeit items, possibly footwear. Ooh. And we have Nike sneakers here. This is obviously to save space but this is not yeah. traditional of the manufacturer to crush all these items. We try and take they care of good. we open it up so that if it is something that's legitimate, we'll tape it up and put it back the way it originally was. Sure. But that's rare. More than likely, what he finds is fake. The most common counterfeited handbag is Louis Vuitton. The most counterfeited sneaker is Nike Air Jordans. Here we have a Rolex watch. But how does he know they're counterfeits? Well, brands train Steve on the telltale signs to spot a fake. They'll sometimes send a kit, and the kit will Chat. include a genuine product. Guys, guys, if it takes an expert to tell whether it's a fake or not, and it takes a, a, a magnifying glass and a microscope, do you think that the average user, average person outside walking it, uh, can tell the difference? No, they, they, they can't. They it can't. will include a kind of a hit list as to what to look for. Most of the hit list is kept top secret to protect the brand against counterfeiters. But Steve could share a few things. Rolex would never put their watches in little Ziploc bags. They don't put these inside it, the silica gel. Rolex does not send to individuals in the United States. They only send to their retail stores. I have another package here. This one's coming from Thailand. We have an assortment of items here. We have Chanel eyewear. We have Gucci eyewear, watches, Ooh, jewelry. Gucci, Louis Chanel, Vuitton, Louis pouch. Vuitton. High-end manufacturers like this never co-mingle their products. In other words, a Gucci inside a Fendi or a Louis Vuitton. These people will stuff watches, a wallet inside a handbag. They don't put any of this in it, the filler inside it. And their items wouldn't come in bubble wrap like this. 
Some of the counterfeits are obvious. Here we have a Burberry coat, and it says Burbelly mistakenly on the button. But some aren't as easy to spot. The quality is getting better. Sometimes these factories, especially what if they China, literally just can't tell the same anymore? Factory that's making the goods for the brand owner is also making the counterfeits, and that's a real problem for the luxury brand owners. Sometimes the brands themselves can't even tell the difference. Some of the counterfeits are that good. I've never seen one like this before, so of course I'm going to be delicate with it. The packaging and the brand doesn't look like the normal counterfeit that we normally see. It's coming from Israel. What is the country of manufacture for Paul Reed Smith? So South Korea. Israel is not a manufacturer. There are a lot of red flags. It's like half and half. It's got model code serial number, UPC number. No, well but done. For the country that it's coming from is the thing that's throwing me off. So I'm going to put it over here on hold and it'll be determined later on. But in order for Steve to seize anything, there has to be a trademark on that product. Ooh. Let's see what we got in here? Shirts. Yes, it's all. No traumatic wins. Suzuki has motorcycle and car trademark, but not on apparel. So this will end up being released. But whether it's a copycat of a product that's trademarked or not, counterfeits can be dangerous. That fake makeup? Well, it can cause rashes, swellings, and burns. Uh, They've had cadmium, arsenic, lead, and cyanide inside makeup, and it's this big as Cadmium is in rechargeable batteries and control rods in nuclear reactors. Whoa, 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 what the fuck? The laboratory test has shown there's been horse urine in it. Steve says fake safety equipment is even more alarming. When it comes to automotive parts, that's a very big danger. Spark plugs, which can cause the engine to go on fire. Oil filters that cause instant damage to the engine. Airbags are a big thing. Uh, something that you may not necessarily realize is something to even consider cool. until you need that airbag and it doesn't go off in the protective way that it should. Counterfeit manufacturers have no regard to health or safety or who they hurt along the way. Okay, All they're okay. concerned about is the bottom Jesus line. Christ. Many studies have shown that counterfeiting is one way criminal organizations fund themselves. The accused group in the 2004 Madrid... Guys, this is, it's, it's a little... It's a little um... Fund that. The two brothers behind the 2015 attack on the Charlie Hebdo publication... That killed 12 people and injured 11. They funded their weapons partly through counterfeit Nike sneakers. And sometimes it's hard to make that connection between that purse you might have bought on the street corner and organized oh, crime Jesus. activity. But this activity that seems to be going under the radar can be lucrative for criminals. And it's because it's high profit and low risk. So when Steve finds a counterfeit good, he seizes it. Then he figures out the item's MSRP, using the brand's website and CBP's internal database. This one here would be about $11,000. That's the MSRP. What the manufacturer would be losing had this been genuine. These are generally on the internet for about $200. Okay, dude. Okay. See, this... This one here. This, I don't think you can apply these analytics like that, SRP, though. using the brand's website and CBP's internal database. This one here would be about $11,000. Okay. Okay, be because because the kid who's buying a fucking ten dollar fake Rolex wasn't going to buy no, an, an eleven thousand dollar piece of fucking the MSRP. What the manufacturer like would be losing? No had this shot. Been they would have never These bought it. Really on the, uh, Even if they could afford it, they probably still wouldn't buy it anyway. Internet for about two hundred dollars. In twenty twenty, CBP seized over twenty six thousand packages for intellectual property rights violations. That's a total value of over a billion dollars. But it's not just the manufacturer's that's, profits that's that what jewelry is. It's a fucking the reputations scum do. When a buyer doesn't know they've bought a knockoff and it falls apart, it's the real company that customer blames. Chat isn't luxury like the profit margins are off the fucking charts and they're 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 juicing it up, dude. They're 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 stacking money. The profit margins are insane, dude. Luxury is a scumaz. Do, guys, guys, it takes an actual a professional with high tier, uh, super high equipment to tell the difference between a cubic zirconian and a diamond, motherfucker. When a buyer doesn't know they've so, bought a knockoff and it falls apart, what would I give it's a shit? the real company that customer what would I give blames. A, if I, if I might, and a over zirconian time, or... consumers' trust yes, in the brand is eroded. Steve does all the paperwork for every seized package. Then he stores the goods. Here we have it okay. a full of seizures. That's so it okay. It's gonna go into the storage room. 
In the end, all these products will be destroyed. They're incinerated at a top secret location. So what happens to the counterfeiters? For one, Homeland Security investigations can decide to open up a case. But Steve says that doesn't happen often. No, the don't first say that. problem? The HSI agents, there's only so many of them. They're going to deal with... Wait, why does he say that then? With the most important thing, which is narcotics. All the fentanyl and the cocaine that come in that are killing people. That is a top priority. He's leaking stress, and man. Be. And the second problem? The nature of counterfeiting is that these bad actors operate without uh, respect for borders. It's oftentimes very difficult to actually get an individual yeah, it, because they're not located guys, in the U.S. I'm not saying it's ethical. American authorities counterfeit don't have jurisdiction scam, in trash. China, where a lot of counterfeit, counterfeits are made. So arresting counterfeiters within the U.S. is hard. In 2020, Homeland Security Investigations arrested 203 people for counterfeiting. Of those, just That's 93 it? were convicted. Diane says a more successful tactic is going after counterfeiters online. Many sell their copycat products on platforms like Amazon, Alibaba, and eBay. To fight the fakes, online retailers have launched anti-counterfeiting measures. A lot of these marketplaces are really working with brand owners. We do not want to be a place where a customer purchases an item that ultimately could impact their health and safety. Amazon's yeah, okay, program true. is called Project Zero. When companies register for Amazon, they give information on their brands, trademarks, and listings. Guys, what is, we don't care, Using what is this that? this data, Amazon's algorithm scans 5 billion products a day for signs of counterfeiting. It looks for things like blurry product photos, copycat product descriptions. Payment information. We look at price point. We look at reviews. And if a listing turns out to be a counterfeit, Amazon will suspend the account. In 2019, Amazon blocked 6 billion suspected bad listings on its site. Jesus! We might funds, we might quarantine inventory. Then Amazon's new Counterfeit Crimes Unit takes over. Formed in 20... Counterfeits hurt small businesses too. My family's experience with that. Okay, yeah, makes sense. Yeah, I, mean, 20... I, I was there for them. It's just sometimes I feel like luxury... Uh, yeah, you can't justify it. Of course not. It's just that... Luxury is such a fucking scam, it upsets me, dude. The unit's made up of former FBI, Homeland Security agents, and federal prosecutors, like Kibaru. Whenever a counterfeit is identified, Kibaru's team will send a packet of information to law enforcement. This information can consist of IP addresses, banking information, email addresses that help us identify the person behind the computer. And to skirt the jurisdiction well, problem, addresses, the unit sends data to agencies all over the world. To Europol, Canadian law enforcement, we partner and work no, with no. law enforcement. Guys, 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 this is not what we have. To Europol, Canadian law enforcement. Guys, listen, a police isn't like that, okay? If they, listen, if this, is just for, this is just for a march. This is for... They're not like this. Trust me, if you get arrested, these guys don't show up. We partner and work with law enforcement on the ground in China. Local law enforcement does react when a brand owner comes to them and wants to do a raid. And I've been involved in quite a few of them where they're really successful. And we can then decide whether we want to pursue a civil suit or if we want to pursue a criminal enforcement action against them. But even if counterfeiters are caught... Sentences tend to be low. For counterfeiting, offenders could face 10 years in prison. Compare that to, say, drug trafficking, where punishment can range from 20 years to life in prison, all the way up to a death sentence. Whoa! And counterfeiters are getting creative and making their products seem legitimate. From creating fake Amazon listings to flooding the U.S. trademark office with phony applications. It is frustrating that it doesn't stop, that every day there's new infringements that we uncover for clients. And it's all led to a surging industry for counterfeits. That sounds so Today, fucking annoying. Today, it makes up 3.3% of global trade. When counterfeits are being sold, oftentimes taxes aren't being paid for those goods, and they in turn can impact economies as well. By 2022, the counterfeits industry is expected to suck $4.2 trillion from the global economy, and they could endanger mm. over 5 million legitimate jobs. Because we're dealing with a moving target, it's a challenging crime problem to address. It grows every guys, day. Guys, look at the chat, guys. I'm not an expert yet, but these analytics chat, if, if they sell 20,000 fake Rolexes, they probably say, yo, we lost like 200 million dollars like it's because okay, of consumer like, demand people need to be out. educated more about the dangers and the old saying if it seems too good to be true it probably is because timmy tom in fucking ninth grade that's buying a fucking rolex to flex at school okay that that's a counterfeit wasn't going to actually buy a rolex how is it so hard to understand it dumb fuck 
Even if it's just for the day Join your stay Outside the sun is shining